Orlean had a very long drive. She drove all the way from Santa Rosa and left at five this morning. We actually had her. <laughs> we actually had her. Um, slated to speak, I believe it was in November or October? October. Um, but that was during the Santa Rosa fires, and thankfully her home uh, was not affected, but several people in her neighborhood were, and she was gracious enough to um, to come back and see us, and so we're really blessed to have her here. So without further ado, let's bring her up. Thank you. Do you mind if I stand here? <clears throat> I'm going to stand here because this is where all my collection of books are that I wanted to speak briefly about first. I'm delighted to be here and I'm so impressed. All these Republicans in one room. <laughs> it would be hard to find that in Santa Rosa. <laughs> we have, uh, we're so top heavy with Democrats. We do have a wonderful Republican women's group, but on a good day we get maybe 30 to 40 out and boy, it's just wonderful to see all of you. I did survive the fires, and I've had several questions about those. I just wanted to let you know my take on the Santa Rosa fires. How many of you are familiar with Agenda 21? I truly believe these were Agenda 21 fires. There was actually a map designed by the Planning Commission back in June 2017 showing the Coffee Park area where 1,300 homes were totally destroyed. And that map was how to redevelop that coffee park area. And they had designed stack and pack housing and high density housing close to a, a, a rail system. And that's exactly what is coming through that area. And then when you see those fires and how deeply these fires were hit, even the firemen said, I've never seen a fire like this before. Everything was melted and pulverized, and the metal, to, me to melt a refrigerator or a washing machine, it has to be 3,000 degrees temperature. A normal fire does not do that. And then to go so deep into the ground that the foundation was destroyed. <clears throat> so the poor people who are trying to rebuild most of the insurance policies don't cover the foundation because most fires don't destroy the foundation. So they're having to pay so much more and a lot of people are just giving up and moving away. And of course that will give more access to redevelopment in this area. So just keep that in mind. I wish I, I could give you a whole hour's presentation on that subject, but just wanted you to know and if you are not familiar with Agenda 21, I actually wrote a book about it. It's called California's Wider Crisis, Do You Smell a Fish? And that definitely is part of this as well. The goal is to control all of our water. And through declaring a crisis, a state of emergency, that's exactly what has happened. There was a Groundwater Management Act passed by Jerry Brown that essentially is telling us that our groundwater now belongs to the state. So that's why I said, do you smell a fish? You know, they pretend it's all about saving fish rather than humans. Uh, I wrote a book about Common Core, the hidden seas of Common Core. I was a teacher for 20 years, and to see what has happened to education in California is just mind-boggling. Uh, I wrote a book about smart meters. <laughs> Whenever I can't figure what's going on, I eventually write a book about it. <laughs> and I also want you to know, our home was the only home that did not have a smart meter in our neighborhood. All around us, the homes had smart meters. They were all destroyed. The Coffee Park, 1,300 homes all had smart meters. And an expert on this subject told me that when PG&E has a break in their power line like they did, this causes a surge to go directly to those smart meters and causes them to explode. So is that what happened? People said they kept hearing a little pop, pop, pop all over. Is, was that the smart meters exploding and then more fires being added to what was already going on? <clears throat> anyway, I will, if you ever want me to come back and speak about that, I will. <laughs> I had to speak on the Electoral College for a Republican women's group, so I put this little booklet together. Uh, back in 2004, I wrote a book called the Golden Rule School, trying to get the Golden Rule back being in our schools. And a man just uh, about two weeks ago 
said, I would like to order that book. Well, I only had two left, so I <laughs> sent him one. And he said, you know, that would solve those terrible, violent shootings if our children could just be taught that again. I said, you're so right. So I wrote this little booklet. <laughs> it's called What a Novel Idea. Bring back the golden rule and morals to our public schools, the real answer to preventing mass shootings and violence. You know, for 200 years, our children were taught morals and the golden rule. There was no violence. In fact, did you know that up until the 1980s, many of our schools had a gun club on campus. In New York City, the kids would bring their rifles on the school bus Drive, carrying them to the school and afterwards would have their little gun club and have a target practice going on. No one is even mentioning that now. They didn't have any violence because they had self-control, self-government that comes from being taught moral teachings like the Golden Rule. And I sent this as a little letter to the editor to the Press Democrat and they actually were going to print it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe it came out this morning, I'm not quite sure. I wrote a little play about our Thanksgiving heritage, because there's so much of that that we're not being told anymore. Did you know that our, our founding fathers, our pilgrim fathers, actually tried socialism and communism and discovered it didn't work? They, were, they had signed a contract that they had to do this with the shipping company that allowed them to come use their ship to come to where they ended up in Plymouth Rock and for this was a seven-year contract after three years they broke it because the people were starving people did not want to have this communal style living they wanted to own their own property have a free enterprise system work for themselves and that's what saved the the little Plymouth colony was changing to a free enterprise system. So I put that in a play. This is all about why we need revival in our nation, not revision. The dangers and risks of an Arti Article 5 Convention of the States. So that's back there as well. This was what people use as a doorstopper because <laughs> it's <laughs> 700 pages. <laughs> this was my 20-year research project from going back into the public schools as a teacher, and it took me three years to write, but it's called By Stealth and Deception, USA Transformation, and it's parallel to the European Union. And I tell how that was the plan. They were trying to create a North American Union out of Canada, Mexico, and the United States, First starting with the Security Prosperity Partnership, Phyllis Schlafly of Eagle Forum was one of the first to find out about this, began writing letters. So many other people then began speaking about it and it became so out there they could not hide it any longer and it got stopped. But that's still one of their goals. So I thought someone needed to write a book about that one. And my latest, <laughs> this was just published a month ago, Islam Rising, Christianity Waning in Europe and the USA. My husband and two of our children were in Europe, in Germany, in 2016, during the month of July, when there were four acts of terrorism just in five days, one in a town we'd just been in. And, I was, and we were just appalled to see the changes that had happened to my husband's native land of Germany because of two million Muslim refugees that had been brought in and also to see what has happened to Christianity. Hardly anyone is attending church anymore, and so these churches are standing empty, either being transformed to a museum or to a concert hall. Most of them are being sold as mosques. And it's, it's just, and how the Muslims are rising in demographics. Nobody in Europe are having children anymore, and the Muslims are just taking over. In another 20 years, Europe will no longer exist, native Europeans. And so it's really, it's a warning to us how if we don't stop this from happening here, did you know that in California there are more refugees being brought in than any other state? And they're bringing them into big major cities so you don't really notice them, but it's, they're just coming flooding in. And if only Trump could actually stop them, he keeps trying all these executive orders and 
some federal judge rules it unconstitutional. So anyway, those are all back there for you. And one other thing, we are putting on our, uh, once a year we have an Eagle Forum conference. This is going to be in Orange County in uh, Santa Ana at the Calvary Chapel Tustin. And we have, it's, the theme of it is SOS, Save Our State. <laughs> and we have some amazing lineup of wonderful speakers and there's some of those back there for you. You're closer to Orange County than I am in Santa Rosa. <laughs> so I know it's still a drive, but <laughs> it's worth it to hear some of these wonderful people. And I brought the Trinity Gazette. Trinity County only has 15,000 population, but the most amazing voter fraud you've ever seen in your life. And I'll be mentioning a little bit about that. Diane Richards is the Republican Central Committee chairman, has taken on this with her daughter, and is the most courageous, outstanding lady. They're both members of our State Eagle Forum Board in charge of, of election integrity. And boy, are they in the thick of this. And I'll tell you about them in just a moment. Okay, now I will switch. <laughs> I wanted to start with just a little joke. As, as bad as it is in California, we have to maintain a little sense of humor. So when things are getting really rough, just remember that even Moses started his life off as a basket case. <laughs> <laughs> and things turned out good in the end for him, <laughs> and so hopefully they will for us. <clears throat> well, I entitled this talk, The Rigged System, Widespread Election Fraud in the USA. As you know, when Donald Trump was running for the presidency, he already mentioned the election fraud. He called it a, a rigged system. And even though he won, which was quite miraculous, I'm sure all of you were praying mightily as we were. We, we knew it was going to take a miracle. Even though he won, he still spoke about this rigged system and voter fraud. And we even started a commission to investigate this. Well, that's now been dropped because the states were not cooperating. But this is one of the statements that the, of course, liberal left are saying. They deny that any real fraud exists, and they keep repeating the old mantra that voter fraud is only an imagination of those who want to pass a voter ID law that would deny minorities the right to vote. I do not understand that. I think minorities would still have the right to vote just by showing an ID does not stop that from happening. But they are saying that even talking about voter fraud is dangerous to the integrity of our electoral system. And my next paragraph is what integrity? <laughs> And after all the research that I've done in preparing this information, ev just about every state, if you really research, has reported voter fraud, especially in this last election. But it's been going on for many years. And one wonders if there is any integrity left in our voting system. So it's not really if voter fraud is real, it's how widespread it is. This is not a myth. President Trump's claims are not just speculation, in fact, as I tell you this information, you will find out that the United States now has the lowest rating of all Western developed countries according to voter integrity. We are number 23rd out of 23 nations. Another report gives us we are 28th out of 28 nations. So it's, it's pretty low. <clears throat> so what exactly is voter fraud or election fraud? Voter fraud is when something has been done illegally and fraudulently to increase the voter share for a favored candidate or decrease that of the rival candidate before or during the actual voting. And you'll be amazed to hear of all the fraud that goes on in registration and uh, the voter, I, how they are now having the, the way that they uh, give these poor people are really or illegals applying for driver's licenses, they automatically get registration. Some of them don't even know that they just got registered. And some of them, in, in pure innocence, think, hmm, I guess I get to go vote now. One lady who had done this for three years then applied to become an American citizen. 
And on the form she had to fill out, it said, have you ever voted in an American election? She marked yes. That now disqualified her from becoming an American citizen, and she was deported. So, you know, some of these people are doing it in pure innocence. So who is held accountable for that? Of course, the person at the DMV that, that gave her this right, supposedly, to go vote. But they're not held accountable either. It's, it's very sad. And then you'll find out that a lot of our voting machines are pre-programmed so that when you press the person that you're voting for, a nice Republican, it comes out as the Democrat. And this has gone on in so many different states. I will give you those in just a moment. They're also bringing in busloads of, bus of voters, of illegals. They pay them to come on the bus, and they then have them line up outside. The person in charge goes into the, the, the voting area, and if, how many of you have ever worked at the polls? Or you've been a, a poll watcher, and you know that they post every hour the latest election results, how many people have come in and have voted, and they have to cross that out. So this man who's come with a busload of illegals goes and takes that paper, takes it outside, and you know, those who are running the, the registration area think he's just a poll watcher, he's authorized to do that. He takes it outside, goes through, sees all those people who have not yet voted, says to all of these illegals, okay, John Smith, that's you now, here's your address, and gives them a piece of paper so they can say that they go in and that's their name and this is where they live. And in big, huge cities where there's you know, lines of people waiting to vote, they just rush these people through, they don't question them, and that's how they have fraud. And then they go on to another area, maybe three different times, this busload of illegals will go vote. And it's just amazing. Then there's election fraud, and there's the voter fraud is kind of what is going on up through the time of voting. Election fraud is often what is going after the voting takes place. This is a conspiracy in how the voting is counted. In Trinity County, they have voting machines that they just put the little ballots through, and the corner of it is cut off, so they line them up that way, and then they put them through the, this tabulating machine, and the tabulating machine can be pre-programmed so that it makes it always 70-30, 70-30. Doesn't matter who they're really voting for, it's always 70% of the Democrats that win and the 30% of Republicans. And, and of course, that it's gone on so long that the Democrats, knowing how this is going to be a shoe-in for them, they don't even campaign. They don't even put up any posters. They just know that this is a rigged system and they're going to win. And I don't know how, do you have uh, electoral voting machines here? Do you, or do you still vote with actual ballots? Good, I'm so glad. That, that's. That has happened as well. I was actually working the polls in Santa Rosa. A person came in to vote, and he was told that he was now a Democrat. And he said, I've never been a Democrat in my life. I'm, I've always voted Republican. How could that happen? So there's just you know so many fraudulent things that happen. Well, Diane Richards truly believes in her area this is a conspiracy. They have the Board of Supervisors. They have the voter registrar. They have judges that are all part of this system, and it is totally rigged. The man the, who was in church, you know, it's a small little county, like I mentioned, population 15,000. The man that was in charge of the voting, he, you're always supposed to have two people to take the ballots back. Anyway, the man that is in charge of taking the ballots back to be counted, you're always supposed to have two people with you and you're supposed to go directly to where they're to be counted. He would drop off at his home, he would go all alone, and then he'd go to the gas station. They actually followed him to see where he was going. It took him an hour to ever come to where he turned in the ballots. You know, what had happened in all that time? So there was just so much amazing fraud. 
And then you'll find out that because we have the very liberal Secretary of State we have, if any of this is sent to the Secretary of State where it should be, he or she should be the one that regulates this and investigates it, it's never investigated. There's always a form letter that comes back. The Secretary of State uh, has found that there is really not any fraud going on here, and, and that's just how it is. And that's how it has been so designed. George Soros, after the election where Al Gore was supposed to have won and didn't, in spite of all those hanging chads that were counted over and over and over again, <laughs> George Soros decided, well, I am going to step in and make sure that all of our Secretary of States from here on out are Democrats. So he has put so much money into this, and probably the vast majority of Secretary of States are Democrats. And of course, they can then stop any investigation, exactly what the Democrats want. So what is so harmful about voter fraud? It can have the effect of a coup d'etat, the entire state or nation can be taken over by this coup of corrupt people, as in a banana republic, where there are no true free elections. And in a really close election, a small amount of fraud may be enough to totally change the results. Even if the outcome is not affected, the revelation of fraud can have such a damaging effect that people will think, I'm just not going to go, go vote anymore. You know, what's the use? I, I, we have the most wonderful man running for Secretary of State. Have you met him yet? His name is Mark Mo Moiser. He's uh, Moiser, yeah. Mo Moiser, I don't know how you pronounce the last name. He is an attorney, and his specialty is election fraud. He just spoke for our Republican women on Monday. I, I'm an amazing speaker and so knowledgeable. And he said, I asked him the question, how long has voter fraud been going on in our nation, do you think? And he said, well, a really long time, especially the, because of the Chicago Mafia. <laughs> but it's been especially bad throughout the nation since the 1990s, going on to 2000 with that Al Gore versus George W. Bush election. And he says now it's, it's just skyrocketing because of the modern technology that they can use. So, voter fraud examples now. I'm going to tell you just some of the things I've discovered state by state. We'll start by California. Uh, there was a man by the name of Skip Vos who wrote into an organization, it's kind of an online newspaper group called Horn News, stated that he was turned away from casting his ballot because the election officials told him he'd already voted by mail. <laughs> he had never voted by mail in his whole life and, and refused to. And they really fought hard with him. He, finally, they gave him a provisional ballot. But you know, who knows if these things are even counted if they already thought that he had already voted by mail. Then uh, in Santa Rosa, as I mentioned, where I was working, I saw several people come in saying that they were a registered Republican, suddenly they were a registered Democrat. And this was in the primary election where they could only vote for their party and now they couldn't vote for their party. And how did that all happen? In California, uh, Los Angeles, there were several missing voting machines. Irene Verratti reported that she witnessed voter disenfranchisement in the Van Nays District in Los Angeles, California, after a two-hour delay caused by missing voting machines. And, you know, who's going to wait for two hours for this machine to show up? That was reported on the local station, KTLA. And then according to Mark Moiser, how do you say? he said that in three big major cities, San Francisco, they have 123% voting. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> in San Diego, 138%. And in Los Angeles, 144%. Isn't that amazing voter turnout? <laughs> These people are not even registered, but suddenly there are huge numbers. California, Trinity County, as I mentioned, I will just read this for you again so that you get this. The computerized machine that counts the ballots was programmed to give two-thirds vote to the Democrat and one-third to the Republicans. 
This has gone on in several elections, so it does not matter who is running or how, how hard they campaign. The Democrats always win by 70% to 30% ratio. And this is in a county where really there's 50% Republican, 50% Democrat. There was also a disenfranchisement fraud. Many voters never received any ballot in the mail, and there was no poll for them to go vote in. And so, you know, what did they do? And there was also a conspiracy fraud involving the judges, where sitting judges refused to hear the lawsuit that, that Diane Richards and her daughter filed, even after the appellate court ruled in their favor. I was in that appellate court hearing in Sacramento where the three judges ruled that Diane and her daughter were in the right, and the federal judge back in Trinity County had to hear the case. It still has not happened. That appellate court ruling was last year in, I think, around this time. They were supposed to have the hearing in June. It was postponed to August, postponed again. It has never happened. They keep changing judges, and there's several, the newspaper back there, the Trinity Gazette, gives you the whole story. In Colorado, dead people were voting. A CBS affiliate, evidence of voter, Affiliates' evidence of voter fraud in Colorado in September sparked an immediate investigation by Secretary of State Wayne Williams. He is a good Secretary of State. A report in Denver exposed multiple incidents in recent years where dead Coloradans were still voting. A dead World War II veteran named John Grosso voted in a 2006 primary election. A woman named Sarah Sosa died in 2009 and yet cast ballots in 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2013. Her husband, Miguel, died in 2008 and yet he was voting a year later. Isn't that amazing? So someone is getting the records of these people, keeping them alive, and they're still voting. In Connecticut, voters were told that the machines were jammed. This was in, at the Kingsbury School in Waterbury, Connecticut. And because they, the machines were jammed, who knows if the votes were even counted. They had to put them in some other slot. And it was only in a Republican district that these machines jammed. And you'll find that in several different states. In Florida, there was a violence against a Trump supporter. A man actually punched a woman in the face because she was supporting Donald Trump. Fortunately, she had pepper spray and sprayed him back. <laughs> <laughs> in Illinois, again, this was the machine fraud. They call it calibration fraud. So when the Republicans would try to vote for their candidate, it would suddenly give the information they were voting for the Democrat. And these machines actually had a little paper trail that came out. A lot of them don't, so you can't even follow what is going on. So I'll just let you know where those states are happening. So that's in Illinois. It's also in Indiana. It's also in Maryland, where they had this calibration errors. And also in Maryland, 31,000 dead people voted. In Michigan, again, the machines were jammed, but only in the Republican districts. And in Mississippi, a voting machine crashed, but only in the heavy Republican areas. In Nevada, the people were left trying to stand there for hours while the people were supposedly repairing a machine. In New Jersey, voting machines didn't work, again, in a heavy Republican district. North Carolina, the machine was rigged. And in Oklahoma, three people voted twice in a presidential primary. In Pennsylvania, the voting machines, again, were rigged. Uh, in Pennsylvania, citizens voted twice. Pennsylvania has a whole bunch. Philadelphia, non-citizens were registered to vote. The poll watchers and inspector, inspectors were banned when they wanted to come in to a polling area in Philadelphia. Millions of voter registration cards were sent to illegals who were licensed drivers. That's in Pennsylvania as well. And in spite of all that, Trump won in Pennsylvania. <laughs> by 73,224 votes. <laughs> in Texas, uh, again, machines were rigged. And uh, in Texas, they had vote harvesting, where people were actually paid to go gather up people to come and bring them to the polls. 
In Virginia, illegals and dead people were found voting. Again, in Virginia, the machines were rigged. In Wisconsin, underage voting was going on. So in total, the high number of inaccurate voter registration was 18 million for invalid voter registrations for the year 2016. And the top five registration election frauds are, uh, this is also what Mark Moiser said. He said, it's dead people voting. Someone who's moved away is still voting. The uh, fictitious ad na names or duplicate names. So Robert Smith registered as Robert Smith one year, and then again he registered as Bob Smith another year. So he gets two ballots in the mail, and and he uses both of them. And then the fourth one: elections are incomplete. Voter registration. They didn't give the date of birth. There's a whole bunch of those that are going on. In fact, 4,000. And the last one, and the biggest one, is the huge number of non-citizens that are voting. And I mentioned how this happens, where they come in a, a big bus, or there's other ways they do this as well. Just showing up to vote using their own name, and if they've been registered by the DMV, they can do so. The percentage of <coughs> illegals voting across our nation, they believe it's about 14%. And this is what an Investor's Business Daily article said, what kind of country is it that lets those who are not citizens decide who governs those who are? If any foreigner can now vote here, is the United States even a country anymore? If Congress doesn't stop it soon, de facto enfranchising of illegals will be our road to ruin. And that's kind of where we're headed. And then <clears throat> I show this graph of all the the nations of the world, Denmark has the highest integrity in their voting. They're at, at 86. The United States is down at 62, the very bottom. And next to the United States is the United Kingdom. Guess why we too are the lowest? The United Kingdom does not require voter ID either. And these other nations cannot understand <clears throat> why we, this most wonderful, the United States of America, would not require voter ID. And you can see how fraudulent things then happen. So the, the left continues to say, in spite of all the evidence about all this voter fraud, they're still de denying that it exists. Democrats have long pushed for voting ease at the expense of voting integrity, pushing measures from voting by email to motor voter laws to same-day registration while opposing voter ID laws that require people to show up on election day with proof that they are actually who they say they are. So what is the best way to strengthen the integrity of elections? Number one, it is to have voter ID. And 75% of all American citizens agreed with this. This is what the US News and World Report reported. Even 63% of Democrats said we should have voter ID. And yet that still does not happen. <coughs> And how many of, um, my next thing is, how question, how many of you vote absentee ballot? Do you think that is a really good, honest, legal way of voting? There is so much fraud that is possible with that, but they're trying to force us into that. Sacramento, this year, will only have the ability to vote by absentee ballot. There's not even going to be a poll area in the whole city of Sacramento. We have a really active Eagle Forum chapter that's fighting this, but it's kind of already a done deal. And they're trying to force this on all of us. <clears throat> so of all the ways to commit voter fraud, the absentee ballot is the tool of choice. So say countless authorities on the abysmal state of voting, voter integrity in the United States, including the Wall Street Journal, and uh, the Washington State Evergreen Foundation, the National Commission on Election Reform, they all say that absentee ballot is such an amazing fraudulent way that they can bring in uh, fraudulent votes. So this is what Sharon Arada, Sharon Arada and her husband, Michael Arada, 
are two valiant people in Contra Costa County. She was our voter integrity leader for about 10 years till she had to step down because of health reasons. But the two of them actually were able to file a lawsuit in Contra Costa County against the illegal practices that were going on with a voting machine, touch, touch screen machine, where people would touch the screen for the Republican candidate and the Democrat candidate got the vote. And they were able to prove this. They were able to take it to court and win. And so they had a whole new election because of just these two valiant people. So this is what uh, Sharon has said, and I will, am I about out of time? Oh, you have, you have more time. Oh, good, okay. We have to take, like, because we want, maybe finish up and take some questions. Also, tell us what we should do. That's what she does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Sharon has a whole list of wonderful suggestions of what we should be doing. But before I give those, let me just tell you what she has written. In California's wide open Swiss cheese voting system, we see the spectacle of county election officials who just a few short years ago headlessly rushed to spend hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars on easily hacked, instantly obsolete, uncertifiable touch screen voting machines with no paper trail documentation. Now at least 15 of these county election officials are rushing to institute an all-male absentee voting, voting system, as supposedly this will be the best there is. The more cynical among us must wonder if perhaps the goal all along was to abolish citizen oversight of the voting process by eliminating recountable paper ballots and neighborhood poll workers while substituting trust us computer voting on an all-male vote counted or an all-male vote counted at the reg registrar's office. And then she gives this amazing quote that I'm sure you've heard. Those who cast the votes decide nothing. Those who count the votes decide everything. And this was by Joseph Stalin. <laughs> so, so if they're there with all of our votes being coming in with absentee ballots, and these people are not honest and not ethical, they can have a heyday. In the state of Washington, that's how the Democrat governor won was because suddenly they had absentee ballots that had been hidden away and they suddenly appeared and they had a total recount. So the Republican governor who had already been declared the winner now had to step down and the Democrat came in because, and who knows if those absentee ballots were really accurate. Why were they hidden away? They've been hiding our military ballots coming in saving them in case they need them. And of course, most of the military vote Republican, so if they would hide them away or they lose them, they, the ship, the plane goes down or something. So we've got to make sure that there is an, I, I think the only people who should really be voting absentee are our military because they're overseas. And that should be really highly watched and regulated and, and made sure those ballots come back to us. The original absentee ballots were just for shut-ins, people who couldn't get to the polls. Mm -hmm. And that's how our founding fathers intended it to be. They wanted us all to show up in person, show our ID, make sure our elections were truly legal and honest. <coughs> uh, the, Sh Sharon also mentions one other thing. Officials may be allowing unscrupulous people to vote multiple times out of their PO boxes, for example, on behalf of the dead, non-citizens, their pets, there was actually a nice Republican in Con Contra Costa County who was having his pet vote just to show how, sh how fraudulent the system was. <laughs> his dog voted, I think, in two or three elections. And he wrote about it in the newspaper, and so then he was picked up. <laughs> <and> <laughs> but he was just showing how easy that was to do. So if any... She, and then she also mentions how if you go into any savings and loan, any bank, any transaction, you have to show your ID. Why should we not have to do that the same if we're voting this amazing thing? So now she gives us a whole list of what we sh should be doing. Uh, voters should oppose resolutely both touchscreen voting 
that provides no corresponding paper trail and all absentee voting. She said we should organize and write letters to our public officials and the newspapers opposing paperless touchscreen schemes and all mail elections. I would say just oppose all those computers anyway. Those computers were designed by the same people that design our gambling systems, the gambling computers. They can be so easily pre-programmed to whatever they want the outcome to be. Just go back to, like you do, a paper ballot that you put in and maybe even have people count those because, as I mentioned, in Trinity County, the voting little machine is rigged. Even that can be pre-programmed. We need to uh, go before our county supervisors because they control the purse strings and tell them how opposed we are to these systems. We need to observe absentee and provisional ballot checks. Go to your registrar's office when they are voting or when they're counting and say, if you don't mind, I would like to observe. And you have every right as a citizen to do that. And so watch the counting and make sure that it's happening legally and they're being honest. And then we need to really, she wants us to have a ballot initiative that addresses the need for a, per, a photo ID for all of us in California. There are still some states that demand this, and we should really have it for all of our states. Then we wouldn't be the lowest on international scores in our, our rating of how our integrity is for elections. Maybe we could get back to where we're supposed to be. She says we should have motor voter repealed. Eight of the 19 9-11 hijackers, all non-citizens, had registered to vote when they were granted their driver's licenses. So how many terrorists are now registered to vote when they were granted their driver's licenses? Permanent absentee voting should be limited to, our, to medical people who need to shut in someone who can't get out to vote and to our military. And ballot enhancement, that's what it's called when they uh, rig these, or when they uh, are counting the silly things like Al Gore is counting with the, the hanging chads. That's called ballot enhancement. And she said, ballot enhancement by election officials, even in close races, must be disallowed. They were Po poking in the little chads that hadn't been, or the holes that hadn't been poked to make it appear that these people were voting for, for Al Gore. Election officials should not be permitted to guess voter intent from whatever pattern appears on a ballot or in situations where a voter has left a space unmarked or otherwise failed to follow simple rules. You don't tamper with that ballot, you leave it as, as, as is. And she said, we must certainly resist the ill-advised drive towards internet voting. That's their next step. And can you imagine how fraudulent that would be? <coughs> and in conclusion, well, two other things. Be a poll worker yourself, and you can then document what you see personally as something fraudulent. And you can kind of talk to the inspector and say, you know, I just saw something very strange going on, and I would like to report it. Someone needs to be there, especially now that there is so much absentee ballot voting going on. It used to be the, the paper would be hanging with all these people who had not come in yet to vote, but so many of their names has already been crossed out because they have voted absentee ballot. And so for the Republicans to come and see who has not yet voted, to call them, say, encourage them to come, say, I'm, I'm here at the polls, I've noticed you have not yet arrived. May I come and give you a ride? That's what poll watchers used to do. There's hardly anyone for you to do that to now because so many absentee ballots have happened. <clears throat> and we'll take questions in just a minute. So um, along with being a poll worker, please vote for this wonderful Mark Moser. He would be amazing. He would be ethical, honest. He understands the system, and we need an honest Secretary of State. And then in conclusion, I would just like to read, we should never elect people and then simply forget about them. Centralized power is not an American ideal. Voting should be kept primarily in the precinct with local citizens providing the oversight of paper ballots cast and counted. Our liberty is too precious for citizens to take its preservation lightly 
or to relinquish our own responsibility in keeping those we elect accountable. So please do your part to try to stop voter fraud, election fraud, and bring back honest elections. Okay. Thank you. We, we, we really only have time for about maybe two questions, and I saw Charlotte and um, Angie. So we'll take those two and she'll repeat them. Uh, uh, Orlean has her books back there and I'm sure she's willing to chat with you after uh, that. So um, Charlotte, what is your question? She wanted to know if she could just go in and say, I'm an observer. You have every right to do that. You are an American citizen. This is your polling area. Just like you Republicans could go in and say, I am a poll watcher. Use that word, because they're familiar with that. <laughs> and then periodically you can go check that paper that they have to post every hour. And just, you know, just be an observer and watch. I've been working the polls for the past four years. This will be my fifth year. And I, I think it's, it, it, and it is a long day. You start at 6 in the morning and it goes till 10 o'clock at night. But I, I think it's wonderful. And I'm usually the only Republican there. <laughs> and, and I think, and I stand up for what I believe in. And, and these other Democrats kind of listen because, well, sometimes. <laughs> but we, we need to let them know that we're out there and that we have strong principles that we believe in. And Angie. Angie um, before we do that. Um, Orlean has um, recommended that we all go and become poll workers. You should see in front of your thing. This is how you sign up. They will train you and they will do give you little dog whistle words like observer, poll watcher. And it is a real education. <laughs> Seriously, I recommend you do it. There's right? more forms back there. It tells all about it. You can register online. You don't have to do it by mail. But please turn out that it's such they a pay you to do it. 200 bucks. You know, it's a long day, but yeah. Sonoma County only 100. <laughs> well, and in my training class, this was going to be my question. My training class was all a bunch of San Jose State kids, several of whom were not citizens. Yeah. So you. Citizens, voters, Republicans, adults, turn out and, and monitor this process. Okay. And I think that's, that's the first line of defense. Okay, do that. Proud of and you. And then that's Angie, because I know Angie has some good input here. There is one stipulation. If it's their first time voting, they are to produce a voter ID. Did you know that? For it. So it's, if it's an 18-year-old first time voting, you ask them for their their driver's license or something that identifies them. And from then on, no more. But thank you. I'm so glad you have that expertise on that. And proud of all of you. How many of you in here have work, worked the polls before? That's wonderful. Maybe by next year, every hand will go up. <laughs> that would be yeah. great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Orlean. <laughs>